published, 434 EDT, the 20th of April 2018, updated, 1138 EDT, the 20th of April 2018 Prince Charles has been back to succeed his mother as the new head of the Commonwealth after world leaders accepted her heartfelt plea to give her son the job when she dies or steps down. Prime Ministers and Presidents including Justin Trudeau and Theresa May are at Windsor Castle today for a crunch private meeting to decide if the Prince of Wales should succeed the Queen as its new figurehead. Last night Her Majesty held a banquet in the Buckingham Palace ballroom and said it was her sincere wish that the Commonwealth will decide that one day the Prince of Wales should carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. The heads of the 53 nations who make up the organisation, which is mostly made up of former territories of the British Empire, have decided they will not ignore the Queen's heartfelt intervention but an official announcement on Charles as chief is not expected until 5.45 p.m. No vote was required, Mail Online understands, because the consensus among the world leaders was that Charles is the best person for the job. This could be when the Queen dies or decides she can no longer carry out these duties. Her Majesty's unprecedented appeal for her eldest son to take over from her came amid pressure from critics including Jeremy Corbyn who said it should go to a foreign leader or be rotated between members. Scroll down for video Commonwealth leaders have decided Prince Charles will succeed the Queen, pictured together last night, as its new figurehead after his mother implored them to give her son the job Theresa. May led a large number of the 53 Commonwealth leaders through Windsor Castle ahead of today's crunch talks Justin Trudeau had already backed Charles for the job and arrived at Windsor with New Zealand's heavily pregnant leader Jacinda Ardern in sunglasses with his jacket slung over his shoulder known formally as the Commonwealth of Nations, the group is a free association of 53 member states. It dates back about 75 years and followed the decolonization of the British Empire, as countries sought greater self-governance in the mid-20th century. A new body was set up which united members states not by any legal obligation, but instead by shared values of democracy, freedom of speech and human rights. The Commonwealth was formally constituted by the London Declaration, which established the members as free and equal in 1949. The Queen remains head of state for 16 member states, she has no formal position in several other nations of the Commonwealth, such as India, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. The Commonwealth accounts for about a third of the planet's population or 2.4 billion people. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had already backed Charles and arrived at Windsor with New Zealand's heavily pregnant leader Jacinda Ardern in sunglasses with his jacket slung over his shoulder. The pair followed behind as Theresa May led many of the other politicians through the castle grounds and St George's Hall ahead of today's crunch meeting. The leaders came to their decision during discussions held at their retreat, a twins at Castle, where informal talks are held without aides or advisers present. Lloyd Dorfman, chairman of the Prince's Trust and Prince's Trust International, welcomed the news that Charles is to become the next head of the Commonwealth. He said, at present, seven of the nine countries where we run programs are in the Commonwealth including Australia, Barbados, Canada, and India so we are already supporting thousands of young people in Commonwealth countries. I have seen the Prince operating with his charities at close quarters, his vision and efforts are making a big difference and changing lives. As head of the Commonwealth, the Prince will be able to amplify this work and bring to the table his extensive experience, wisdom and passion. Charles's hopes were given a massive boost on Thursday when the Queen publicly endorsed his future leadership at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, CHOGM, in London. The unprecedented move was thought likely to end years of speculation about who will take over as head of the institution her father King George VI first led in the aftermath of the Second World War. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said on Thursday, I very much agree with the wishes of Her Majesty that the Prince of Wales be the next head of the Commonwealth. And Keith Mitchell, the Prime Minister of Grenada, told the BBC, it would be good news, the Queen herself does very well and certainly we have been fortunate to have her leadership of stable leadership over this period. But having the Prince of Wales would certainly not be 
an unhelpful act at this point in time. And the organization's outgoing chair in office, Maltese Prime Minister Joseph Muscat, appeared to take Charles's future role for granted when he told delegates, We are certain that, when he will be called upon to do so, he will provide solid and passionate leadership for our Commonwealth. But the succession is not automatic, with the decision in the hands of the heads of government of the 53 Commonwealth states. The politicians file past the statue of King Charles II in the grounds of Windsor today as they look more than likely to back Charles. Mr. Trudeau was deep in conversation with Ms. Adam and revealed yesterday how he hasn't been invited to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's wedding despite being close to the suit's star Seychelles President Danny Foray, Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May and Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland lead other leaders down through St. George's Hall they took their seats in the Waterloo Chamber before starting their private discussion session about the Commonwealth's future spokesman could not even confirm that any decision would be announced at a press conference following the leader's retreat at Windsor Castle. Mrs May welcomed them all to London in the last meeting before the Queen stands down as a figurehead Prime Minister Theresa May has already given her backing to Prince Charles, with her official spokesman saying, The government supports the Prince of Wales as the next head of the Commonwealth. He has been a proud supporter of the Commonwealth for more than four decades. It has been widely assumed that the Queen, who celebrates her 92nd birthday on Saturday, is probably presiding over her last Chogmin personas. She has not taken a long haul flight for a number of years, and the venue for the biennial summit moves around the globe, with the UK only hosting it three times in the last 32 years. The Queen has been head of the Commonwealth since coming to the throne in 1952 but the position is not automatically held by the British monarch. Her Majesty was hailed as an icon of the Commonwealth last night by an African statesman who expressed the organization's regret that she plans to wind down her work with it. In a toast to the monarch at a Buckingham Palace dinner for leaders and foreign ministers from the Commonwealth's 53 nations, Ghana's President Nanu Adadankwa Kufoado, offered their thanks to her. We are led to, to understand that she'll be winding down her duties as head of the Commonwealth, he said of the Queen. This toast thus takes on an added significance, for it falls upon me to express the depth of our collective regret that she will no longer automatically be present at our proceedings. It is my fervent hope that the deep love she has held for this association will continue to light the way for all of us. He paid tribute to her ability to put visiting politicians at their ease and told 130 guests in the picture gallery, she will always be an icon of the Commonwealth. The Queen was hailed as an icon of the Commonwealth and she has asked them to have her son as its new head in a toast to the monarch at a Buckingham Palace dinner for leaders and foreign ministers from the Commonwealth's 53 nations, Ghana's President Nanu Adadankwa Kufoado, offered their thanks to her Charles. The Prince of Wales, greets Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau after he backed him for his mother's job. Britain's Prince William speaks to guests during a reception at the Queen's dinner for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Prince Harry speaks with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau during a reception. After a receiving line the Queen hosted a dinner for Commonwealth leaders and their spouses last night in the Buckingham Palace Picture Gallery, Picture de la the Prince of Wales, Queen Elizabeth II, Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland and Prime Minister Theresa May in the blue drawing room Prime Minister Theresa May was one of the first to arrive to the dinner, wearing a dark green and black evening gown with red patent heels, and was accompanied by her husband Philip May the dinner, the first time that the Queen has hosted an evening meal in the picture gallery, the air of a farewell party for the monarch who will be 92 on Saturday and no longer travels abroad. In an ivory-white, beaded lace dress decorated with crystal daisies and designed by Angela Kelly, the Queen, wearing the Queen Mart tiara, a ruby and diamond necklace with matching earrings, and the garter star, welcomes her guests to her home. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all here tonight, as head of the Commonwealth, I am delighted to be able to host this occasion in the United Kingdom for the first time in many years. This dinner is always an opportunity for us to come, together, as friends, and I am grateful that so many of you are here with us this time.
I know that all of my family join me in wishing you a very enjoyable evening. Thank you. The younger royals were out in force at the dinner. The Duke of Cambridge and Prince Harry were joined by their cousins Princess Beatrice and Eugenie as well as older members of the family. The Queen looked especially delighted to greet Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau.